My name is Naritzi Sanchez, and I am the Senior Open Source Program Manager at GitLab. I run the GitLab for Open Source program there, which gives top tier for free to um, any qualifying open source program or uh, project or organization. And I have a background in program management, project management, product management, and business operations. I studied international relations and psychology. And so I've had the awesome opportunity of being on, working very closely with engineering teams and technical teams and everything else as somebody who is a non-engineer. I consider myself to be a leader and an organizer, and I work very much with cross-functional teams. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to give this talk is that sometimes when people think about GitLab um, or other uh, tools where you host your source code, uh, Usually people think about it being a really highly technical tool and a place where mostly developers um, work. But I use it every single day uh, at GitLab and um, in open source projects that I contribute to. Um, and so I wanted to share a little bit about how I use it in non-engineering ways and ways that I think um, we can all use GitLab to enable more cross-functional and diverse teams. So today we're going to cover three main things. First of all, why should we use GitLab for cross-functional teams? Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how to create the right environment in order to facilitate that. And I want to give some tips and tricks for non-engineers. We'll go ahead and dive right in with why this matters. So basically, reasons to use GitLab cross-functionally. And the first thing that I want to highlight is that GitLab is meant to be a platform for all stages of developing software or for just making a project happen. That involves different stages, including managing, planning, creating, verifying, packaging, securing, releasing, configuring, and defending your project or your software. And so here we I've included uh, an image of the software development lifecycle and the different stages and how GitLab maps to other um, products uh, that you may have used um, to develop software. And so as somebody who really lives in the project management world, I tend to use a lot of tools for project management, things like Asana or Trello, Jira, etc. And so I found myself using GitLab um, for those same purposes in the project management space. Uh, I can't go over all of the different tools that we map to, it's a lot, but I encourage you to take a deeper look when you can um, and see how GitLab kind of maps to that. And the point of all of this, sorry, I'll go back to this slide. Um, the reason why I wanted to say this is that um, because we cover, because GitLab covers so many different stages of the software development lifecycle, it's meant to really include all sorts of team members. And um, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk a little bit more from this open source mentality because that's where, where I come from. Um, but it can be mapped to uh, just general team environments as well. So I, I think that when people talk about open source, again, a lot of times you think about developer communities. And there is more and more awareness around needing other skill sets in open source. Uh, and yet, uh, the even those skill sets are sometimes um, very uh, limited in nature, in the sense that people seem to agree that technical writing is something that's really valuable, and that design is really valuable and marketing even is really valuable. But it's sometimes harder for people to map other skill sets like sales and business development into open source or HR and people operations, things like that. And I think that those skill sets are incredibly needed. Um, so for example, uh, 
you know, sales and business development people might find themselves uh, working on at, at an open source project, helping with fundraising and partnerships, or and somebody who's into HR and people or who wants to develop that skill um, might be great for engagement teams or board of directors or newcomers initiatives. And so as we start to think about different skill sets that can um, be part of open source projects, it's important to think about how the tools that we use enable that to happen. And this is where, again, GitLab really uh, excels, in my opinion, at being a one tool, one platform solution to enable this um, breadth of, um, of contribution. The reason why one platform helps with this is that it creates transparency into other teams' work. It allows for easier communication, and it even lets you start to contribute to other teams. Um, for example, if you uh, started on the engagement team, you might end up wanting to promote something that the engineering team has done. Um, or conversely, if you're at a, at a company, again, if you're on the marketing team, um, you might want to help promote something that the product team does. And because you're able to use the same platform, you have a whole level of uh, visibility into what it took to create that product feature or whatever it is, because you're using that same tool and you have the ability to navigate and see everything. So it can be quite great for that. Um, as I mentioned in open source, sometimes we have engagement teams that are kind of like the marketing team. And one of the things that um, we've seen at the GNOME Foundation, which is one of the projects that I contribute to, is that when the engagement team has created um, some sort of blog post, as I mentioned, or you know, some sort of uh, uh, image for promotion, we can get expert involvement much more easily because of that same platform or tool. So um, it helps with that transparency. For the easier, easier communication, uh, fragmentation of tools can hinder communication. So I don't know if you've had this problem, but I've run into it many times when there are when the design team is using one tool and the engineering team is using another tool, sales is using another tool. And so, you know, everybody has to have a login. Sometimes there's issues around having enough licenses for everybody, or maybe there's there are three different tools being used just for chatting. Um, so having a consolidation of tools really helps um, make it easier to communicate with the people that you need to and therefore you can collaborate more effectively. You can also contribute to other teams. And here I, I wanted to give um, a very tangible, uh, ex I guess, example of my own experience. When I uh, first joined um, open source communities, I really didn't know how to use a lot of engineering tools. And I was very much focused on strategy and project management um, for open source um, conferences and for things on the engagement team. And then because we were using GitLab, I started to edit the events website because the markdown pages effectively looked to me like almost like a Google Doc or something where you know it was easy enough to edit as a document. Because of that, then once I joined GitLab, I had a much easier time creating and reviewing merge requests and updating the GitLab website. It's something that at GitLab, everybody is encouraged and it's even necessary to edit the website. And so um, it just it was so much more easy for me to be able to do that because I had already been using the tool for engagement type purposes. And now I've even started to dabble in uh, 
changing or I guess editing other websites, uh, again, for conferences and things like that, I'm able to pick things up more quickly. Um, and, and it's very rewarding and awesome. And I think that it was because of that um, sort of contributor journey from using it for one specific purpose, but then being able to then map that into other areas where of contribution that are more um, developer oriented. So really cool. Uh, so now that we've talked a little bit more about, um, you know, the why uh, use GitLab for uh, cross-functional uh, collaboration, I want to talk a little bit about the environment that you need to create in order to make this happen. And the first thing is that documentation is key. Uh, at GitLab, we have a handbook first approach, which means that we document everything, all of our business practices, um, also, all of the way that, like, for example, if we have a dashboard um, where we're, you know, measuring the success of our programs, we have to document how it is that we created that dashboard so that others can replicate it as well. Um, our handbook is integrated into our website and there are code owners. So it's easy for people to see who um, has the authority to uh, change that page ultimately, or who has the decision-making power for that. And I think that this really helps also when you're in um, asynchronous team settings, because oftentimes, you know, you, might, you have to um, collaborate and, and in a really large company, you may not know who has the authority of changing this or the decision making power. And so having things like code owners um, really helps to be able to um, make the, the process easier for updating things. Uh, also around documentation, different teams have different processes. So having documentation really helps you navigate uh, collaboration, cross-team collaboration. And um, as I mentioned already, it really helps with the remote culture um, and asynchronous communication because you can also just read um, more about what a team already does, um, how they operate, how to file issues for them, etc. So the need for more synchronous com communication is vastly reduced. Um, so this is a way that uh, you can use um, GitLab, so this handbook is, is hosted on GitLab, on GitLab pages, and um, it really does help people be able to navigate um, the world of cross-team collaboration. Onboarding and training. Whether you're in a, a, at a new company or if you're joining an open source project for the first time, um, onboarding is necessary and it's not always done super well or effectively. And when you think about onboarding, um, there are different types of onboarding that exist. For example, there's tools onboarding, there's subject matter onboarding, and there's social onboarding, for example. And at GitLab, we use, again, the tool to, um, to help people onboard. So here you can see an example of my own onboarding issue last year, where there in the issue template, there is a lot of information about what the onboarding issue is for. There are, it's formatted in a way where you can um, collapse sections because there's a lot of different tasks for people to accomplish during their time onboarding. Um, Onboarding tasks can help people navigate the history of the project or the company. Um, it oftentimes contains video recordings for how to use tools, um, tasks that everybody should do, including reading the code of conduct or, um, you know, including information on people's uh, profile page. There's uh, on the GitLab one, there's instructions for what co for coffee chats and scheduling um, live onboarding sessions. And just in general, it's a, a chance for you to share with newcomers uh, 
all the information that they need to know to get successfully onboarded to your company or to your open source project. So um, it was the first time that I've seen uh, an, an onboarding issue uh, was when I joined GitLab. And I thought it, it was just great because it allowed me to onboard at my own pace um, in an asynchronous remote fashion. So um, this helps with geo diversity um, and all sorts of diversity because people can really um, take it again at their own pace. One tip about setting up the right environment is to think about non-engineers non regularly in all that you do. Um, again, because GitLab, I think that at least when I thought of GitLab, I thought of it as being very heavily engineering focused. Um, having people think about other skill sets at all times helps to build a more inclusive product. And a, an example that I like to highlight is that Again, with GitLab Pages, um, our entire website um, is uh, has this little banner at the very bottom that says, you know, you can edit this page or open the web IDE, and it asks people to contribute to it. And so, just by having that little banner that then opens a markdown page that people can start editing, like a Word document almost. Um, it encourages people to start contributing to the website. And, um, and, and just by having simple language like that, that people can understand. Not, every, not everybody knows what web IDE means, but everybody understands what edit this page means. Um, it can help. So uh, that is an important thing to do as we set up this right environment. Uh, another thing that I've really appreciated about um, GitLab, the company, is that they have taught team members about um, differences among cultures and brought awareness to some very specific things. Um, you can read much more about this on the internet. Um, I have a, a whole speech on uh, cross-cultural collaboration. But there are things like high context and low context speech, where, for example, high context cultures tend to have more like uh, nu nuanced and longer uh, ways of speaking um, versus low context speech is all about being concise and to the point and, uh, you know, they use repetition to make sure that people understand, etc. There are also things like negative feedback tendencies about differences of how different cultures um, give negative feedback, where some cultures give negative feedback in public um, and some people, uh, some cultures give it in private. And so understanding um, both how it's delivered and like the, the tendencies of different cultures helps to create empathy and understanding um, and uh, again, enables, I think, more cross-cultural collaboration. And I think that it's also important to create inclusive practices around remote work. So I, I know that lots of companies had to shift to all remote um, because of the pandemic. As we start returning towards some level of normalcy, there will be hybrid uh, situations and um, you know some completely all remote uh, companies that come up as a result. And uh, creating really deliberate practices around all remote work is important because it differs from um, the in-person things. So one of the things at GitLab is that we not only provide the software for teams to be able to um, create very inclusive uh, cultures and environments for collaboration, um, but we also help with um, uh, education on this. We have a handbook that's over 8,000 pages with information about how to create inclusive practices of a remote work or to learn more about the different um, differences in, in cultures. Uh, so now with that background, I want to move on to some tips and tricks. Um, these are some of my favorite things to help non-engineers. So 
the first thing is, and of course, uh, engineers are not excluded from this. It's just um, to, again, broaden the skill sets that are using GitLab. So um, labels are incredibly important. And at GitLab, they're very flexible. So uh, you can subscribe to them. And there are these things called scoped labels in our top tier that allow you to denote status because um, I'll show you in a moment, but um, when you have a work board and you move issues from one section to the other, scoped labels help you to, um, there can only be one scoped label at a time, so it can help you kind of keep track of the status. Um, here we go, Kanban boards. This is something that I use all the time as somebody who does uh, project and program management. Uh, Kanban boards are, if you're familiar with the tool Trello, it's very similar where you have cards that um, you can move across the board. Um, this is very much used in agile project management, agile software development. Um, with different, uh, here on the left, I've included a screenshot of um, how you can have different Kanban boards for a single project. So you can create new boards to have, um, you know, snapshot views of different things that you'd like to track. Um, the labels that I mentioned before, they can be used to create columns. So again, to perhaps um, have some sort of workflow um, where you need to move things from one status to another, whether that be, you know, things that are in your backlog, work in progress, and things that are complete, or perhaps things that, you know, through stages of like first engineering, then design, then QA, or whatever it is. Um, and uh, you can also see who's assigned to them at one glance, or you can create a, a, a Kanban board that just shows um, that instead at the very top has uh, different people assigned so that you can see all of the different issues that that particular person is working on. So these are extremely flexible and great for um, people working in marketing or accounting, project management, um, all these things, um, di different departments, I would say. Um, you can use them in very versatile ways. So again, um, because <laughs> I'm in program and project management, I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I found useful around epics um, and issues. We recently added a feature called um, health metrics, or I guess it's not metrics, but health um, of issues. So at a glance, you can see how, for example, these are my OKRs, my objectives and key results uh, for the quarter. And you can see if they are on track, if they need attention, or if they're at risk. And you can drill down to see each issue um, or collapse them and kind of have an, a broad overview of how the project is doing. Uh, this, I think, is, is really great um, for tracking you know, your team's progress, all of that. Um, I have uh, an image in the top right that just talks a little bit more about how epics work. Um, they can you can have a parent epic and then child epics underneath it um, to drill down on um, more specific tasks that you need to or specific um, areas that you need to uh, um, focus on. And then issues can be very specific. Um, we have guides to talk more about how to use GitLab for project management. But my, um, I, I just wanted to showcase that we have features that um, are very powerful and that um, any team can use. Uh, sometimes people, uh, are not sure how to stay up to date with um, the the various um, work that that certain teams are doing. So uh, notifications at GitLab have been made to really cater to your specific preferences. For example, if you are um, interested in in, in keeping an eye on what the product team is doing and you want to subscribe to one of their boards, um, you can you have 
the ability to change things to have um, global settings or watching it, participating, having just mentions. Um, if you use Slack, it's in some ways similar where you, again, you can kind of decide the level of um, activity that you would like to subscribe to. And uh, one thing that we're encouraged to do at GitLab is to um, click the box that says receive notifications about your own activity. This has been a favorite hack of mine because um, when you check this box, you get emails essentially of any issue that you create. And while I think that um, GitLab has amazing features. Um, sometimes I have to admit that I get lost in the search. Um, I can't find issues that I've created or, you know, there's just so many things uh, they, they might take a long time to load. So sometimes I end up searching for things in my mailbox instead. Um, and so this little feature has helped me a few times. So just a, a quick trick. Um, for those of you who are not super familiar with GitLab um, and might not you know, uh, have an engineering background, um, so have had a chance to use this. I love creating these tasks. Um, every at the bottom of every issue, there is there are some links that show you markdown um, tips and tricks and quick actions. So those have much more in depth information about how to um, edit issues, so to say, or you know, work with markdown. Um, but you can create a, a, a task essentially, like a little checkbox by having an asterisk and then the brackets. Um, and this is just great for when you're creating issues that you need people to perform actions. That way they can just check the box. Another tip or trick um, is that GitLab has features for design management. Um, so again, I talked before about how different teams oftentimes use different tools. And one of the reasons is that, at least in my experience, the designers do not like to work with um, the same tools that engineering does for um, issues of usability of the tools oftentimes. Um, but GitLab has in mind, again, the entire um, the entire software development process, which completely depends on um, the design just as much as engineering. And so um, if any of you are familiar with Envision, Envision app, um, it lets you put comments on different mockups or whatever it is um, so that people can you know, give feedback on designs. Um, GitLab has that baked into every single tier. Um, so here on the right, you can see that um, you know somebody uh, uploaded a picture of uh, the Linux App Summit um, design, and I ended up um, adding some comment and asking something about, you know, if it's if we should include a hashtag or something. Um, and that way, you know, you can have conversations with whoever's working on the design um, all in the same place, um, and and yeah. It's we're um, improving the design management functionality with every release too. So lots of great things coming up. Uh, suggestions in code. So one of the reasons why I think, um, you know, I, I personally do like using Google Docs quite a bit, I'll, I'll admit. Um, and one of the reasons is that you can uh, work collaboratively with people on a document. Um, but GitLab's features around this are improving again every single release. Um, and one of the things that uh, they've that that GitLab includes is this thing called suggested changes, which is kind of a hybrid thing of um, having comments and also like actually making suggested changes. So just like in Google Docs. Um, this is great because um, you can kind of see changes that have already happened um, within, let's say that you're writing a blog post or something like that. You can see what has been changed. You can go in and you can start to comment. You can make those um, changes within 
um, the specific lines and then people can choose to apply it or not. So it's an awesome um, feature. Uh, here on the left, I've just shown you where you can find that insert suggestion link. Um, and uh, on the top right, there's an image of how you actually do this. When you go into your commits, you go and um, click on a line that you'd like to edit, um, hit the comment uh, icon, and then you can insert your suggestion and add some feedback um, for the person or you know comments, whatever you'd like. All right, and then this last thing is about um, uh, different ways to make merge requests. And that's because if you're like me, <laughs> I, I try not to work within the terminal. So I use um, mainly the web to, or I use the web to make any kinds of um, edits to websites and things like that. Um, so, on the left, I have an image of how the markdown page um, looks. And this is what I talked about a little bit earlier, where at the bottom you can edit a page or open the web IDE. And this is the edit page um, view. So it looks very much like just a Word document, as I mentioned. And then there's the web IDE on the right, where you can see the different files. Um, this is a, a great option when you have to um, edit multiple files at the same time, or um, sometimes you need to do this when you need when you have to add images or um, just make more complex changes. Um, but I, I tend to prefer using the the just um, edit the the static editor. I think it's called um, on the left. Like that's my preference. Um, so yeah, these are two different ways that you can make it. And again, the, the fact that you can do this is, I think, great for, um, again, that uh, cross-functional team enablement, where you might have um, team members who have never heard of Git before or who have never used um, a tool like GitHub or GitLab. And so um, having things that map more to other tools that um, they are accustomed to or you know, ways of, of editing files that they're accustomed to makes a big difference. So um, it's one of the things that I think really helps uh, make GitLab a, a cross-functional uh, team um, collaboration tool. And uh, just at the very end, I want to say that um, GitLab has an open roadmap and it's an open core company, which means that it's an open source project first and foremost um, with um, higher tiers um, that are more designed for enterprises. Um, but we build alongside our community and we um, really do try to uh, work alongside our community in every way, shape, and form. That's we take input on our processes. We um, actually, you know, build the code uh, along with our community, um, and we and we love for people to give us feedback on what we already have um, and where we're going. So I just wanted to pitch this um, first look program. It's um, a, a program that allows people to give um, feedback, um, participate in research all of that, um, I have the link here and I would encourage you to join. Uh, I have a few resources, things that I've already mentioned within the presentation. Um, there is, I'd like to highlight this learn portal, um, which has things on agile project management or specific things like CI, CD, or, um, you know, our security features, all of this kind of stuff. Um, it's a great starting point. Um, and then I also wanted to include some of the links around our all remote playbook, for example, our cross cultural collaboration guide, um, things that can help you set up the right environment for cross collaboration and diverse teams. <laughs> And with that, I'm going to end today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I welcome you to connect with me on Twitter or on um, LinkedIn. And I hope to see you around. Thank you so much.